When I, when I was in clinical practice, I saw four OR fires and they all involved the patients and it was quite devastating. So I, I'm, I'm really glad to see that we're taking fire risk assessment and prevention so seriously in this guideline. Me too. Um, I think it all goes back to making sure that the interventions that you're putting in place to prevent fires match the fire risks that are present in the OR right in front of you. Um, I too have had a couple, been involved with a couple OR fires um, in my career. One was patient related um, and I believe that there is an open oxygen source involved. So, you know, had they addressed that from the get-go, we might not have seen that fire pop up. Um, and I had another one related to some electrical equipment. So again, it ties in back into our recommendations um, for electrical safety as well. Renee, in the environment of care guideline, this is such a great guideline and there were several new recommendations. And I noticed that, that you removed the content on noise and distractions, which is very important. So can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, well, I first want to tell everyone, don't worry. The guidance for noise and distractions can still be found in the guidelines. However, it is now housed in the guideline for team communication. So when I was reviewing, you know, all the evidence on this topic, it really became clear that noise and distractions strongly influence the quality of the communication that occurs between members of the perioperative team. So it's really more appropriate to have the guidance for that appear in that guideline. Yeah, that's, that, that makes sense. And then the other thing that I was really excited about is the newly created fire risk assessment and prevention algorithm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Like you mentioned, I too am really excited about this. Um, so we have the new fire risk assessment and prevention algorithm. It's kind of a merging of the two old documents that we had, which was an assessment document and then a protocol with a bunch of interventions um, listed. And this new document will help teams really effectively assess fire risk and then intervene based on those identified risks that are present. We've also added some recommendations to help interdisciplinary teams develop programs and plans that address management of clinical and alert alarms, occupational slip, trip, uh, and fall prevention, latex safety, and chemical safety as well. Nice. I love all those. I especially love the fire risk assessment. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But how will this change perioperative practice? Like, how will nurses or leaders do their jobs differently day to day? Well, I think in the immediate OR, what we're going to see is that teams that may have previously assessed fire risk using like a score or a low or medium high risk rating will find some differences when they're using our new fire risk assessment and prevention algorithm. So there's gonna be four yes or no questions that teams will kind of answer to identify the presence of the three different fire triangle components. Um, and then they'll move, if they answer a yes to a question, they're gonna get some examples of interventions that they could implement to address that risk. Um, and once you have address the risk or answer no to any of the questions, you kind of proceed down the line to the next question. It's pretty easy. Oh my gosh, it's so easy. I just love it so much. It's just going to make things so much better. Well, so what resources do we have to help um, nurses implement these changes? Sure, sure. Um, we have guideline essentials, that collection of recorded webinars, uh, policy and procedure templates, competency verification tools, and a whole slew of other tools um, to really help nurses implement the guideline. We have a fire safety toolkit um, that's available to, not just to members, but also non-members. Um, and then we have a clinical simulation scenario for fire in the OR that can also help teams in training in that. Nice. So what, did anything surprise you when you were updating this guideline? Um, I think... What surprises me most about the guideline is just how different and unrelated all of the topics in this guideline really are. It's kind of a mix of like workplace and patient safety here and, you know, a, a slew of other topics. <laughs> um, 
I'd also have to say that with the exception of fire safety, there's a ton of evidence on fire safety, right? Most of the topics had really very little new evidence to support any significant changes in practice. Yeah. If you could think of one really important takeaway from the guideline, what would that be? Ooh, this is my favorite question. Um, I would have to say that the fire risk assessment and prevention um, it really needs to be based on matching interventions to the risks that are present. So fire risk assessment should not be based on a risk score or rating because you can't really intervene appropriately unless you know exactly what the risks are that you're seeing in front of you, right? So say a team determines a case to be low risk. That alone doesn't tell us, you know, is there an open oxygen source present that we need to address? Is there an electrosurgical device that could, you know, ignite something on fire? This new algorithm will guide teams in intervening um, based on the presence of specific oxidizers, fuels, and ignition sources.